so I just saw Sonic the Hedgehog, and surprisingly, it wasn't the worst thing ever made of all time. And it just might have been if they stuck with the original design. That thing was debatably more disturbing than cats. Now I'm predicting that this film will probably make its money back, but I'm wondering if it wouldn't have if they didn't make that change. I mean, not only does it make the main character no longer a nightmare, but I think their willingness to make these changes after the backlash was actually some good promotion. Guys, we did it! The Twitter mob worked! Can anyone honestly explain to me how this monstrosity got approved in the first place? Whoever was in charge of this was an asshole. And I don't say that just because it looks bad. I say this because every single animator that worked on this film would have told them that it was bad. And they clearly refused to listen until the point where they thought no one would watch the movie. And no, this was not some gigantic conspiracy where they just pretended they were gonna go with this design. Just trust me, I have my ways. This is yet another film to add to the pile that royally screwed over the animators working on it. Not only did the animators work extreme hours over the course of months to fix this problem that wasn't even their fault to begin with, but to return the favor, MPC closed its Vancouver studio that animated the whole film just before Christmas and laid hundreds of people off. Thanks for all your hard work, get fucked! How many times is this gonna happen before things change? Once again, I am shouting out the documentary Life After Pi on YouTube. Animators being treated like shit is not a new thing, and it's best that everyone's informed about it. Now about the actual movie, it was bleh. I don't know. I could imagine really enjoying it as a stupid child or man-child. Surprisingly, the character of Sonic was not all that annoying and had some charm to him, which again probably would not have been possible with the original design. And that's not to say he was never annoying, because he certainly was at points. Yo, fellow kids, you know that meme dance called flossing? Well, Sonic does it twice in the film. There were some sequences and set pieces that were kind of fun. The scene with the turtle was pretty enjoyable. There was a lot of opportunity for what were essentially time manipulation sequences. Basically, Sonic is so fast that when we look in his perspective, time is basically stopped completely. They don't really explain it, but I'm hoping that it's something that he can willfully turn on and off, I guess. Because otherwise, any normal conversation that he has in the film is one where he's actually talking I'm not even gonna do it. There's no way I can actually replicate it. It is that slow. This is probably a really good movie for Sonic fans, I think? I can't honestly say that it's easy to get into the mind of a Sonic fan, so I'm just guessing here. He did eat chili dogs. That's a, that's a Sonic thing. There was also a moment where some crazy man sketched a picture of Sonic, and it was literally the Sanic image that's found on the internet. It was kind of hilarious. The opening of the film was kind of bizarre and very seriously toned. For the most part, I think the tone of this film was done well for a kid's movie type of thing. And even the serious parts, I'd imagine that children and Sonic fans would be able to take them seriously. As for me, the seriously toned moments were the only genuinely funny parts of the film. The rest of the film was trying to be funny, and it wasn't really to me, but when it wasn't trying to be funny, it kind of was. Basically, every 15 minutes in the film, Sonic has this kind of revelation where he's like, oh wait, I'm going to be alone forever. I have no friends. And whatever scene was just happening, I guess just pauses for a bit while they play this sad orchestral string music. It was kind of hilarious. If the entire movie was just Sonic and Sheriff What's-His-Face, then I probably would have enjoyed it more because Jim Carrey's scenes were only ever annoying or boring. He's obviously trying, so I'll give him that. He seems like he would be great entertainment at a children's birthday party. It was just not for me. Every scene where it was just him plotting his master plan, I kind of just zoned out and thought about other things. The Democratic primaries in the United States are kind of interesting. What's the deal with the coronavirus? They also did that stupid cliche at the beginning of the movie where it starts out in the middle of an action scene and then the screen pauses and you hear Sonic and he's like, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got in this situation, except without any self-awareness to it. He didn't say that exactly. It was just the dumb cliche. There was also some noticeable product placement. Apparently it's now canon that that Sonic's shoes are Puma brand. They also heavily promoted Olive Garden and tried to make it kind of a self-aware joke, but it was really just an obvious product placement. I guess I'm gonna get into spoilers if you consider this movie something that can be spoiled at all, I guess. So if you don't wanna see spoilers, then click to this point in the video. There's your warning, three, two, one. There were a few moments in the film where I found myself a bit frustrated at how it was written. At the beginning of the bar fight, the sheriff easily could have flashed his badge and prevented the whole thing. Why didn't he do that? And then later, 
later, he actually shows his badge to get on the roof of some San Francisco building. But at this point, there's been plenty of airtime of him on the news as a suspected terrorist, and he just flashes his badge with his picture and his name, because he's an idiot, I guess. There was a scene where a sticky grenade was on Sonic's hand, and he was trying to get rid of it, but it was sticky, and all I was thinking the entire time was just, take off your fucking glove! You're wearing gloves! He removes his shoes and socks later, but not his gloves. Those are, like, attached to his body, I guess. I don't know. Okay. In the scene where the drones first start shooting at the main characters, there's this really annoying plot convenience that is obviously just lazy writing. We see a shot from the perspective of the drone and it says, Reloading? Reloading from what? All of the ammo is already in you! So Dr. Robotnik manages to get a hold of one of Sonic's quills and discovers that it has the power energy to make things go fast, so he puts it in his ship, and then his ship can go as fast as Sonic. So while all these rockets and drones are exploding in a freeze frame way where time is stopped and Sonic's running around because he's so fast, Dr. Robotnik is able to, to maneuver his ship and chase him along too. But having a ship that's able to move at that speed doesn't change how fast your brain processes information. He should have immediately crashed into a building. Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm trying to apply logic to a dumb kids movie that doesn't give a shit about these kinds of things, whatever. I just like thinking about these things and I like talking about these things, so just don't, don't worry about it, my rating would be the same regardless. There's a point near the end of the film where Sonic dies, I guess, and they're very certain that he's dead just by looking at him from a distance. Earlier in the movie, they were asking about his pulse, but I guess that doesn't matter at this point because the script needs him to be quote-unquote dead. And wouldn't you know it, love saves the day, except instead of love, it's friendship in this movie because it would be really weird if Sonic had a romantic relationship with the sheriff. The sheriff goes off on his little emotional monologue and at the end of it, he is like, you are my friend, and then Sonic Sonic's eyes open and he's immediately back into action. He saved his life through friendship, yes! So yeah, those were just a couple of things I wanted to point out. Obviously, the bigger issues would be things like how annoying Jim Carrey is. There was a very brief moment in the film where they had a piano rendition of the Green Hill Zone theme. I kind of wish they did more things like that in the movie, honestly. There was plenty of opportunity for orchestral renditions of the original soundtrack, even in the fight scenes, but uh, they just they did other things and it was fine. Anyway, this movie was not great, but still better than I expected it to be, I guess. Although much of it is either boring or annoying, it is not completely joyless. So yeah, check this one out if you want, maybe. If you love Sanic the Hedgehog, or if you if you have kids, maybe. This is this is not a bad movie to take your kids to, I guess. It was, it was, a, it was good for a kid's movie, but that's still not great. And I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10. <laughs>